What it do, Tao Clan? It's your boy Tom from Tao Physique back giving it up video. In today's video, guys, we're going to be tackling BCAAs, a well requested topic, and why I think is a waste of money. You guys asked me to do this video, and I'm about to deliver. So, I know that me making this video, man, is probably going to reduce my chances of ever getting sponsored by a supplement company. But to be honest with you, I don't give a damn, man, because I care more about the truth. And I don't want to be pushing down any product that you guys throws that I personally do not believe in. So with that, man, let's get straight into this video. So guys, first of all, we need to discover what the hell BCAAs are. So BCAAs are short for branch chain amino acids, right? And there are three amino acids that make up BCAAs. And those are one, leucine, two, isoleucine, and three, valine. BCAAs are marketed to be able to one, help you increase muscle mass. Two, help you reduce muscle loss when you're in a caloric deficit. Three, help you with your recovery. And four, they're supposed to help you with exercise induced fatigue. So I'm gonna cover those topics in this video today. So first, when it comes to muscle gains, BCAAs are essential, but the most important BCAA is leucine. So it has been shown through research that about 1.8 to 3 grams of leucine per meal has been actually been able to increase protein synthesis, which is pretty much just geek words for saying increase muscle building. But here's the thing though, there is a ceiling for about how much leucine you can get that will actually increase this effect. So like I said, the ceiling is actually between 1.8 to 3 grams of leucine per meal. Any more than that and you're not increasing any more muscle building and you're honestly just pissing out all that leucine. But here's the thing, leucine can actually be found in whole food sources such as chicken, beef, fish, pork, cheese, and whey protein. If you are currently eating these kinds of foods, then you're probably getting in enough leucine already to be able to increase muscle mass. If you guys are into building muscle or improving your performance, you probably heard this number being thrown around a lot in the fitness community about how much protein you need per day. And that is, you need about one gram per pound of lean body mass or protein per day if you're trying to bulk or if you're trying to cut. Now, if you're getting in that amount of protein from the sources that I mentioned above, then you're gonna be well above the threshold of leucine needed in your bloodstream to be able to increase muscle so actually you supplementing bcas into your diet to be able to build muscle is not going to be useful because you already got that through whole food so honestly you're just going to be pissing out all those bcas that you're chugging down then we're not going to go on to bcas when it comes to fat loss so here's the thing guys when you're thinking about losing fats you need to think about one, your training, two, your nutrition, and last is your supplementation. I noticed that a lot of people actually place supplementation above their training and nutrition because I get this question asked a lot in my email. People ask me, hey man, I'm trying to lose some fat, man. What supplements do you think are best? But they won't even talk about their training or nutrition, which is actually even more important than your supplementation. And how you need to train is you need to train by still lifting heavy, still maintaining that muscle tension so that you give your muscles a reason to stay. But guys, if you're dieting down and you're lifting baby weights, you're going to end up with baby muscles, man. And then secondly, you need to make sure your, your nutrition is in order. So when you're dieting down, you need to be in a caloric deficit. But the thing is, you need to make sure that you're in a sweet spot because if your caloric deficit is too big, then you're going to be at greater risk of muscle loss. What I always tell people simply is to always aim for about one to two pounds maximum of weight loss per week because that is slow enough for you to be able to maintain as much muscle mass as possible and honestly when it comes to dieting the slower the better and then once you cover your caloric deficit the next thing you need to think about is your protein intake so when you go on a caloric deficit your protein requirements actually go up now you need about 1 to 1.4 grams per pound of lean body mass if you're already getting that much protein per day you probably already have enough bcs floating around in your system that you taking any more is not going to help you in fact i have seen quite a few studies that have talked about this that when training has been seen to be effective and nutrition has been seen to be in place adding any extra bcaas have been known to have absolutely no benefit or no added benefit in terms of muscle retention or fat loss so guys if you already have your training and nutrition in order then you taking a bca supplement is not going to help you get better results when you're actually on a diet next up we need to talk about bcas when it comes to recovery now this one is kind of interesting because it has been shown for real that bcas can actually help you reduce DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. But just because you're less sore doesn't mean that you actually have recovered better during your workouts because soreness is not the best indicator of progress. The body 
is not used to uh, maybe the um, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth rep with a certain weight. So that makes the body grow. Then going through this pain barrier, experiencing uh, pain in your muscles and aching, and just then go on and go on and then go on. And this last two or three or four repetitions, that's what makes actually the muscle then grow. In my opinion, also if you're getting in enough protein in your entire diet then you're going to have absolutely no problem with recovery in the first place taking bcaa's is no better than taking painkillers when you think about it right i actually found this very interesting study that looked at if you take aspirin or ibuprofen after a workout you actually can increase your chances of building more bone density so this is interesting because bcaa's do not have this effect in essence even though bcaa's are expensive painkillers you can actually see better results by taking real painkillers after a workout now key here is guys if you take the painkillers before the workouts they can actually have a negative effect the main key here is taking them after your workout because if you take them before it can actually reduce the anabolic response that you get from exercise just a little thing to note so next thing that's up is that we need to now talk about bcas when it comes to reducing exercise fatigue again this one is true bcas can actually help you reduce your fatigue during exercise so when you take bcaas you actually reduce the amount of serotonin that is flowing in your your brain serotonin is a neurotransmitter that kind of calms you down chills you out so when it is high in your brain you kind of feel kind of lazy you're too relaxed you don't want to hit that last set but when it's reduced you tend to feel a little bit more amped up a little bit more energized and you feel less fatigued but if you take excessive BCAAs it can reduce serotonin to the point where you can actually feel depressed or even anxious so if you are noticing that you're taking a lot of BCAAs and you feel depressed sometimes or overly anxious the problem may not be the fact that you are mentally weak. The problem may be the fact that you're actually consuming way too many BCAAs and maybe you should actually take it out of your diet and see if it actually improves. But even though BCAAs can be shown to actually help you with fatigue, there's another supplement that is dirt cheap that will also help you reduce fatigue and that is caffeine. Caffeine has been seen time and time again to help you with exercise performance and help you go a little bit longer and harder. And caffeine is way cheaper than BCAAs because my biggest stick with BCAAs is the fact that you really don't get what you pay for. They are so expensive, but honestly, you can get a lot of the benefits from BCAAs by taking a lot more cheaper options. For example, you could spend that money you use on BCAAs to buy more protein, and you can also use that money to buy a caffeine supplement in case you need a pre-workout. So really, you don't need BCAAs into your diet to get better results. In fact, the BCAAs are just kind of like designer protein. In my opinion, BCAAs are like the Louis Vuitton of protein you don't really need them but if you have them you look cooler you know what i'm saying so in my personal opinion bcas are an absolute waste of money but they can actually be beneficial for a few group of people so one group of people that could actually benefit from taking bcas are one people that actually have low protein intakes but honestly this problem can be solved easily by just eating more protein and also another group of individuals that could benefit from bca supplementations are vegans and vegetarians because most vegans and vegetarian diets are very low in the amino acid leucine and as i said before leucine is actually very useful for stimulating muscle protein synthesis so they could actually benefit from getting in more leucine in their diet but if you already eat meat or fish then honestly you probably have way than enough bca circulating in your bloodstream that you don't even need any more supplementation with that guys i know there's gonna be some of you guys that are kind of skeptical that you're like oh no man but i feel like it works for me and all i can say is you know why don't you just try a little experiment right why don't you go without bcas for at least a month or three months and see if there's any difference in your body composition or your performance in the gym because me personally i have gone through this i remember when i was in college i used to buy into the hype of bcas but i used to buy them all the time but then one day my supply ran low and man because i was in college man i was pretty broke so i couldn't afford to get a little tub of bcas but i continued training and i actually noticed that i still saw pretty good results in fact i even saw better results because after i stopped taking bcas i focused more on my training program and on my nutrition and i actually saw better progress guys bcas even though they could be useful for a very small select few of people for most of us bcas are an absolute waste of money and honestly you could spend that money on better things like buying better training programs or you know buying better training equipment or buying better food but don't use that money into buying more supplements because for the most part I really do believe in being a minimalist when it comes to supplementation and you don't really need as many supplements 
as you think because really how most supplements work is just placebo in the first place which is another video again if you guys want me to make a video about the placebo effect of supplements leave it in the comment section below and I'll get to work on that so with that guys I am gonna wrap up this video if you like the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you have subscribed to the channel man go ahead and subscribe already because you know it is cool over here and to all my fellas don't forget who we do it for guys the ladies or should i say the beezies peace